Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, give him a holy hand. Praise him this morning. For the Lord is good and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. Wonderful Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's no one greater than our God. Hallelujah, Jesus.
and look to whoever is going to you and just tell them, I win. Whatever you going through, you better tell them one more time, I win.
us and be glad in it. We're thankful for our praise and worship team. Thank God for every song and thank God for every prayer that has gone up up to this present time. We do honor the men and women of God on this morning. Amen. We thank God for our pastors that are here, Bishop Wells, Apostle Wells. God bless them to Bishop Fox. Amen. To Prophetess Ellis. We are thankful for what the Lord is doing here in this house. Amen. We thank God for every friend and every visitor. Amen. Are you ready? Are is anybody ready for another great move of God? Amen. The Lord moved on last night. last night. People was delivered last night. Amen. And I'm believing God for another healing. I'm believing God for more deliverances on this morning. Amen. I know that our God is a great God and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. There is no other God like our God. Amen. There's some little G gods, but we thank God for the almighty God. Amen. We thank God for the almighty God. Amen. Besides him, there is none other. Amen. And I, I, I got to admit, I got to confess that I feel a praise in my feet this morning. this morning for a treat coming from our young people. Amen. I call this group, this group is called the Wells Flag Dancers. All right. Hallelujah. I want the world to hear that this is the Wells Flag Dancers. Apostle, come up here and stand next to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Apostle's Flag Dancers. Yeah. And we're going to give these young people a, a, a praise and we're going to thank them. Put your hands together for this fine group of people that is coming before us. How many times do you see young people come and giving God worship and giving him praise? Hallelujah. Amen. And we're thankful for what God is doing here in this house. Amen. So as they're preparing. Disconnected. Bluetooth. As they are preparing, we're going to continue to pray for them. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying yourselves on this yeah, morning? Yes. Amen. And we want to thank God for all of those listeners that are with us on social media. God bless you. All those that are hearing through the airways, God bless you on this morning. Praise God. And we can put a mic. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bluetooth disconnected. Bluetooth pairing. Praise the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be?
service on this morning. I feel God moving in a mighty way here this morning. Amen. We received from the city of Baltimore, listen to this, a presidential citation. And it's coming from Brandon M. Scott. And he sent me an email just on Friday night. Um, he was purposed to be here on this morning with us. And he sent me, he said, Bishop, I send my regrets that I will not be able to make it on this morning. But as soon as I am able, I will be with you all here on Carroll Street. Right. Amen. Amen. And he sent a city citation. And I'm going to read to you what this says. He says, Brandon M. Scott, President of the Baltimore City Council, do hereby present this president citation to Bishop Lorraine Wells and Bishop-elect Charles Wells in recognition of your outstanding community service Amen. of feeding the hungry. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And he said something else, he said something else. And establish, establishing, empowering youth programs in this community. Yeah. And he said, I thank you for all you do. And he has given his corporate seal here in the city of Baltimore. So let's give these pastors a hand. Choosing us to do a night and a great Amen. work. Amen. No one Amen. should be hungry yeah. in this place, Amen. naturally or spiritually. Amen. And we thank God because we know that the best is yet yes. to come. Woo! We're going walking forward yes. and we're not looking yes. back. God bless you. You know. Are we proud of these pastors? Yes, yes. I am proud of my pastors. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Now, um, I do not, and, and, and I'm going to say this lightly, we're, we're blessed. I'm blessed. Prophetess Ellis, Bishop Fox, Life Impact Church. Yes. We're blessed to be partnering with yes. this great ministry yes. as becoming ministry partners. Yes, I, I may be the leader, but we are partners. partners. Amen, amen. Somebody say it together. We are partners. We are partners. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. So I'm, I'm blessed. And, and let me tell you about um, Bishop Lorraine Freeman <laughs> Will. I can do this because I'm the bishop. So let me tell you about Bishop Lorraine Charlotte Freeman Wells. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Y'all didn't know about Charlotte, did you? Okay. I, yeah, you know. Amen. So so our, our, our pastor, and, and again, Life Impact is just so happy and, and so pleased. Um, she brings as with her and Bishop Elect Charles Wells, she is a pastor, pastor in the continent of Africa. Yes. Yes. Amen, where she leads a group of pastors in Africa. Yes. That's what comes to us in this partnership. 
Amen. 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 And we are thankful for her work. What comes to us in, in this partnership is her work and her, her, her hard work in this community Amen. of feeding the hungry yes. and empowering these young people. And, and we're going to help her do this in every step of the way. Life Impact is going to help her do this in every step of the way. Amen. We love this family. Yes. We love Deliverance Center. And we plan to be with you forever. Amen. Amen. So now that we have families that have united, I guess I have a whole lot of cousins, <laughs> aunties and uncles and everybody else. So we thank God for you on this morning. I want to pause again. I want to thank God for um, one of my deacons that was with me in my previous venture at the house of God. And um, I spoke to this young man um, just the other day and um, he really made me feel very good. This is Deacon Brian Williams. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Deacon Williams. Amen. And his beautiful wife, beside him is a beautiful wife. Stand up, bride. Amen. And, and you're lucky I don't have a lot of time today because I will have y'all march around here as we serenade y'all with some music. But I don't have the time to do that today. You better be glad. So, so, so to, uh, oh, oh, okay, man. Oh, you're going to make some time. Not, not, I, and not only them, I have some other newlyweds. Hey, I got some other newlyweds. Hold on. I got some other newlyweds. I have Mr. And Mrs. Jennings. If y'all can stand up. All right. So, 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 somebody hold the baby. Somebody hold the baby. Uh, somebody watch the baby. Amen. I want these two couples to stand up. And, and, uh, and we're going to get them some. Did you get down there with your wife? And what they're going to do, they're going to hold each other's hands right. and they're going to march, serenade around the building one time. All right, Brother Frank, are you ready? Come on, let's give them some music to scroll by. And as they scroll, we're going to put our hands together as they scroll. some hiccups, you're going to have some bumps in the road, but your love is going to endure all things. Amen. Just as Christ has already set an example, love endures all things. And I have found that when we go through persecutions, couples, couples, when we go through persecutions, when we go through trials and tribulations, those trials and tribulations will tend to make you closer. And they'll tend to make you better. So it's okay to go through trials. It's okay to go through persecution because persecution brings on closeness. And how can two walk together except they agree? And then when God gets two of y'all together in a prayer room, come on, 
on somebody when two come together in a prayer room every devil begins to tremble every devil begins to be defeated when two can come together in a prayer room Hallelujah. Y'all have a seat. I'm... Hallelujah. 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 We're not ready yet. Prayer changes things. So, so, so when adversity comes, amen, because my wife, we, 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 this is going on 30 years. For me and Tamara, 30 years. All right, now, man. And it's like it's only been about 10 or 12, but it's 30 years. And I thank God. So, so, so I am a witness that God can do it all. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He can do it all. Amen. So, at some point in time, couples, I would like to see couples come together. Yes. And, and, and when you, these couples come together, it can help solidify your marriages. Yes. Don't be hanging out with single people. Because that single mentality will say, baby, come on now, we can do this one more time. But I'm here to let you know one more time is over. Ah. 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 I'm the bishop, I can say that. One more time is over. So as you do things, do it together. Right. Couples build each other up. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 So sometimes when we come back and uh, in, in 21, you know, because it's getting cold, it's getting ready to get cold. And, um, you know, Bishop, Bishop don't like cold too well. Okay, I'll come back. Maybe during the cold. I'm looking at my buddy here. Bishop, you told me. Okay, I guess I'll come back during the cold and bundle up. I'll probably be by myself, but I'll come back. Because we're not coming. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Some of them bought these big fur clothes. And, and now they got a fan, and they, and they got bought them big fur coats up here. Praise God. Amen. So we're thankful. And we're going to move on. I'm going to ask Sister Melanie and, and, and um, to come a spoken word. And after the spoken word, we're going to have the word of God coming from our own Bishop Precious Marion Fox. Amen. She is a mighty woman of God. That will be giving us a pure, unadulterated word of God. Yes. And I'm asking for your prayers. Do not sit there as the word of God go forth and don't say amen. 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 I want y'all to learn that as the word of God go forth, say amen. Preach, preacher. And, and, and say something back and confirm that that word applies to you. And that word is correct. Amen. amen. Can I get everybody to say Amen. Can I get somebody to say, preach, preacher? Preach, preacher. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, preach, bishop. Preach, bishop. That's what we want to be hearing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on up here, Sister Melanie. As God has blessed you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is that better? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, how y'all doing? Good. <laughs> well, again, my name is Melanie Lavender. Um, I'm going to do a piece called Midnight Walks. And this is just going to take y'all through a journey I had as a, you know, young sinner woman. But God never left my side. He still speaks to the sinners. So, yes, yes. yeah. All right. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. I would sing that song, Walking Home Drunk from the Club. Stumbling down the street, singing to the top of my lungs. Have we trials and temptation? Yeah. 
Is there trouble everywhere? As I would pass by the crack house full of dangerous men looking for a victim they could use for the night. But I would still sing with a blunt in my hand, Jesus knows my every weakness. Oh, yeah, Take it to the Lord in prayer. Sometimes others would answer back. Sometimes I sang alone. But walking those streets by myself, I never felt alone. I never felt unprotected. Maybe I was too inebriated to notice the rapists in the bushes. Maybe I was too high to feel the killer's eyes. Maybe I was too dizzy to see the stalkers lurking. Maybe I was not alone. And Jesus and the angels were guiding me because on those nights, I would stop and pray with the other girls who were walking alone. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Who will all our burdens bear? Jesus knows my every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Because on... That's how I got it home safely walking the streets before dawn. That's how I made it in the worst neighborhood in my city. That's why I always felt protected because I took my fear and belted it out through the songs my grandmother taught me. So now that most are living in fear, I sing those same verses to get me through the fear all around me. I sing those verses when the fear of judgment surrounds me. I can hear Leela Yvonne singing in my ear. I can hear Chlorine Graham playing the drums. I can see Eckert Graham shouting. I can hear Bishop Elliot commanding the enemy to lose him. Because they planted this seed in holy ground. And no matter how far I ran, those songs held true for words. Because Jesus knew my every weakness and I took it to the Lord in prayer but when I was almost home and the night seemed the darkest and my legs felt like giving up I would start whispering bread of heaven bread of heaven feed me till I want no more so then my strength would return and I would sing louder bread of heaven bread So as I walked into the yard, I could feel the anointing all around me. Even though I was drunk and alone, I would stop myself from speaking in tongues because I felt unworthy of his cause. But I would sing as I unlocked the door, Jesus knows my every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And that's how I made it home on my midnight walks alone. That's how I made it home on my Midnight Walks Alone. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Anybody know that song? Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus knows my every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Come on, let us give Sister Melanie a hand of praise. There's midnight walks. And I know she's speaking to someone in the building on today. Because we were not always saved. We didn't come out the womb holy. That's right. Amen, walls. <laughs> we didn't come out the womb holy. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. And many of us are still striving today. Yes. To reach the mark of holiness and striving each and every day. I do desire your prayers as we go into the word of God. We honor each and every minister, our senior bishop, Bishop Ellis, to the bishop-elect and apostle of this house, the angels of this house, Bishop Wells and Bishop-elect Wells. We honor you on today. I'm going to ask you to get your Bibles and go with me in the word of God. Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I'm doing my best to keep my cup down. Yes, God. Because there is a word. Yes, yes. 
In the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 24 through 27 is where you'll find me. Isaiah 14, 24 through 27. One more time for the people on the airways. Isaiah 14, 24 through 27. And the word of God reads as thus. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. 25, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him under foot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. Verse 26 says, this is the purpose that is purposed. Somebody said, this is the purpose. Is purpose. That is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts hath purpose, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? If we were to speak from a historical context, when you look in the book of Isaiah, we find that once again the people of God find themselves captives. They have now been released from the hands of the Babylonians. However, when we reach them in this chapter, there is still a remnant. Somebody say remnant. Amen. Meaning a small portion of God's people that have been left behind, that are still in captivity. And we find God reminding his people once again through the word that when I have spoken something, it shall come to pass. Yes. When I have created something, it will do that which I created it to do. And when I have purpose for something, somebody say purpose. purpose. That purpose will come to pass. He says, surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. And so we find God reminding his people that I know it looks like you're still in captivity. And I know it looks like your circumstances are bad. And I know it looks like the situation seems impossible. But you need to remember what I said about your purpose. I find that in the word of God, there are reminders throughout the word of God where God has to remind his people just who I am. And, and as we get into situations and circumstances, sometimes we forget what God has spoken over us and what he has said unto us. For just a moment, and I'm, I'm taking my time on purpose, <laughs> because I want to make sure that you get what it is that God has given me to share with you on today. When we look at the word purpose, the word purpose is the reason for which something is done or for which something is created, or the reason for why something exists. Somebody say purpose. purpose. It is the reason why we are here today. It is the reason why the car accident did not kill us. It is the reason why when we were diagnosed with COVID-19 that we still survived and others died. It is the reason why when we went through cancer and, and we survived cancer and why we went through surgeries and why we went through trials and why we went through tribulations and why we survived lupus and whatever else ailment may have struck our bodies. Somebody say purpose. 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 Wouldn't let me die. Amen. Hallelujah. That's Purpose. my subject for today. Purpose. Purpose. Wouldn't let me die. Amen. It's the reason why when, when I wanted to die, because there are times and situations in our lives that occur, and we go through those trials, and we go through those tribulations, and we lay down, and, and we ask God to just let me sleep through the night. And I don't want to get up in the morning. Let me die in my sleep because when I get up in the morning, the situation is still bad and the circumstances still look like they're grim. But somebody said, purpose. Purpose. Wouldn't let me die. That thing which God created me to do and that thing which God created me to be wouldn't let me die in that circumstance. It wouldn't let me die in that situation. It wouldn't let me die in the streets. 
It wouldn't let me die on the corner. It wouldn't let me die in the bed of fornication. It wouldn't let me die. Because there was purpose. A reason for which I was created. Somebody say purpose. purpose. Wouldn't let me die. Amen. There's another word that was in the scripture besides purpose, and that word is called disannul. And it says, who shall disannul it? In other words, God said, when I have purposed something, when I have created something, and the reason for which that thing exists is because of a purpose that I have created it for, who shall disannul it? Say who. who? <laughs> I thought it was interesting that God used the word who and not what. Because I found that situations and circumstances are easier to survive than people. Situations and circumstances are easier to survive than people. He said, who shall disannul it? Disannul meaning who's going to cancel it? Who's going to abolish it? Who's going to um, uh, terminate it? Who's going to squash it? Who's going to nullify it? Who's going to rescind it? Who's going to roll it back? Who's going to strike it down? Who's going to vacate it? Who's going to strike it out? Who's going to abolish it? Who's going to invalidate it? Who's going to make it void? <laughs> he said, when the Lord hath purpose it, who shall disannul it? Somebody say, purpose wouldn't let me die. There's a reason why I gave you those two words. You need to understand that when God created you, he created you with purpose. Somebody say, he created me with purpose. Now, for this first point, and I only got two because I won't be before you long. God told me to get a rubber band. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and God began to have me play with this rubber band. So sometimes I play with a smaller rubber band, but this is a big one. I had to borrow it from my sister because I left my rubber band at home. And a rubber band is created to hold things together. Amen. And this particular rubber band is made for the hair. It's made to hold the hair together. But if I take this rubber band... and I put it on this bottle, it becomes a grip on a bottle. Okay. Yes. And if I take this same rubber band that was created with the purpose of hair, yeah. and I put it on this mic, it then becomes the grip on the mic. Uh -huh. It could be the grip on a pen. It could be the thing that I use to put the mic and the water together. It gets repurposed yes. from the thing in which it was originally created to be. And because I took the rubber band that was meant to be in my hair and I repurposed it to be a bottle holder, somewhere down the line it began to lose its identity. Because somebody, namely me, repurpose it yeah, yeah. and God said for point number one that you have lost your identity well Ooh. well <laughs> but purpose wouldn't let you die somewhere down the line somebody twisted you into being a victim my God but that wasn't what you were created to be yeah. you were molested and being a victim of molestation didn't Create you to be a person who is supposed to be a victim. God said you were repurposed by the things that happened to you. Yeah. Not only that, when you begin to go through other circumstances and God began to reveal to me people who've been raped identify themselves as victims of rape instead of identifying themselves as a daughter that is created by the Most High God. Not only that, we get married and marriage twists you into whatever image that husband or that wife makes you into. The hallelujah. And you get twisted and mangled. And sometimes you get so lost that you forget what God created you to be. And God said that just because you are going through an identity crisis, it doesn't mean that I don't have purpose for you. He said the reason why you are still alive, even though you are operating in a purpose for which I have not created you, is because that which I put on the inside of you has to be birthed forth. And if it means that I gotta drag you through hell, if it means that you gotta go through the fire, if it means that you have to learn again who you are and who you were created to be, you will give me the purpose that I put on the inside of you before you leave this earth. Somebody said purpose wouldn't let me die. Divorce does not define who you are. And you can go through the divorce and still have purpose. You can go through marriage and still have purpose. You can go through being raped and molested and torn apart and your life could be 
you. Purpose won't let you die. Purpose won't let you stay down low. Purpose won't let you cry and moan and weep and never get up. But purpose causes you to get up every morning. Purpose causes you to wash your face. Purpose causes you to dress yourself. Purpose. God said you may be going through an identity crisis, but that which I have put on the inside of you, who shall disannul it? I don't care what they call you. They may call you a whoremonger. They may call you a liar. They may call you a thief, but that is not what I created you to be. And I need you to stop believing the lies. You are going through an identity crisis. Stop believing the lies. They told you you'd be nothing but good for on your back. Stop believing the lies. Yes, you may have lost your identity. You picked up a title. Hallelujah. Sometimes the title is wife. Sometimes the title is husband. Sometimes the title is mother, father, girlfriend. But there is a title that we were given by God. Yes, yes. He's a tabose. All the titles that we wear, they don't define who you are. Abuse does not define who you are. Yes. You associate yourself with those things that have happened to you. And God said, I need you to change your identity because there is purpose that has been planted on the inside of you. And I need you to give it. Give me what I created you for. Yes. Wow. And we got to get to a place where you start to know your worth. Wow. Where you start to know who you are. Because it is God who wrote in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Uh In other words, before creation, before the sperm and the egg came together. Can I be graphic? God said before they came together, I want you to think about all the times that sperm and egg come together but don't create life. Wow. 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 They come together all the time. But it's unnecessary to create a baby. It don't necessarily create life. But God said before I formed you in the belly, this is why you need to stop telling mothers who having babies out of wedlock, that that's a mistake. Because God has purpose for any life that he allows to be created. And on the outside of eternity, before we were created in our mother and our father's womb, whether we came through a 16-year-old womb, an 18-year-old womb, a married womb, an unmarried womb, we are here for purpose. And God said, before I knew you, before I formed you, before you had hands and fingers and eyes, I knew you. And on that side of creation, I spoke some things into you. I put some things on the inside of you that have to be birthed out of you, that have to be awakened in you, and that purpose has to come to pass. You need to understand that your first identity is known through Christ. Who are you, child of God? Amen. That's it. Amen. Who are you, child of God? Child of God. Child of God. I'm a daughter of the Most High God. I'm a son of the Most High God. And the purpose that he created me for has not been fulfilled. That's why he wouldn't let me die in the car accident. That's why he wouldn't let that sickness take me out. Somebody said purpose wouldn't let me die. I may have lost my identity, but purpose wouldn't let me die. It wouldn't let me fall short. It wouldn't let me compromise. He began to tell me in the word of God that we need to understand not only are we his daughters and his sons, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your identity is not locked in how close your eyes are together, how long your hair is, the roundness of your hips, the length of your legs. It's not wrapped in those things. God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And if the truth be told, we didn't have nothing to do with where our eyes are. We didn't have nothing to do with whether our hair is long or short. We didn't have nothing to do with those things. It grow the way it grow. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) And if you're going ball, you're going ball. You have nothing to do with that. But you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God said your identity is locked in what I say. Not in what the world has told you that you become. They may repurpose you for something else. But I created you with purpose. I lost my identity. But purpose wouldn't let me die. 
Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You don't like my hips, you don't like my lips, you don't like my fingertips, that's all right. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. If you don't like the package that God put me in, don't worry about it. Dust I am, and to the dust I shall return. But while I am here, I am going to fulfill the purpose for which God created me. Hallelujah, because I am his daughter, or I am his son. And I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And no matter what hell I have to go through, purpose. 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 It won't let me die. It won't let me die. Amen. Yeah. Purpose. purpose won't let me die. God said to me that some of us, oh help me, Holy Ghost. I don't want to be too graphic with y'all. Oh, Jesus. God said too many of us are compromising our work uh, just to have. Oh, Bishop, can I say it? Jesus. Bishop said, I don't know. Say it. Say it. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Too many of us are compromising our work just to have a dip in our lives. Too many of us are compromising our work just to have a pussy in our lives. And God said, but you cannot allow a man or a woman to define who you are. You cannot keep being repurposed for somebody else's use and compromising who you are just to have a boo and a babe. Compromising who you are just to have a honey. Compromising who you are. Uh, young people still looking at me with eyes wide. Yeah, I said it. Because we compromising. Yes. We compromising our purpose to have somebody laying next to us. We compromise our purpose to shut up. We compromise our purpose. God said, I want you to come out from among them and be ye separated. He said, I let you jack up long enough. Purpose won't let you die. I want you to come out of that situation. Come out of that circumstance. Stop compromising who you are. Purpose won't let me die. Hey, God. Uh, you got to get to a place where you say, I am who God says I am. I am anointed. I am blessed. I am kept by the Most High God. I am loved. I am wanted. I am needed by the Most High God. Even when you forget who you are, God says, I know your name. I call you by your name. And you are mine. Purpose. Point number two. And then we're going to move on. You are broken in order to become whole. But purpose wouldn't let you die. You were broken to become whole. But purpose won't let you die. Now, I want y'all to know we're going to be comfortable shacking fornicating, uh -huh. and all the other things we're doing as long as nothing's happening to us. God said, I had to break you. In other words, I had to take that boo, bay, honey from you to break you. Not only that, I had to take some habits from you. You know, you were relying on the job, and as long as everything was going good on the job, you didn't see fit to come worship me. As long as you had all the money you needed and the food you needed and the house and the car and everything that you needed, you didn't think you needed me. And it wasn't until I broke you. Not just financial breaking. Some of us, the financial breaking is enough to drive us to our knees. But then there are others, they need more than financial breaking. Your heart got to be broke. That person that you rely on and put all your hope and your faith and your trust in got to let you down. So your heart got to be broke. Your finances got to be broke. You got to get to a place where you hit rock bottom before you will hear what thus saith the Lord. God said I had to break some of you. 
In other words, you may be going through this pandemic, you don't know where your job is coming from, but yet I am providing your needs according to my riches and glory. I had to break your heart from that woman or that man that you were so in love with. I can't breathe without him. I can't live without him. I don't want to go on without him, Bishop. And if they don't love me, Bishop, I am not going to make it, Bishop. And if they don't marry me, Bishop, oh God, Bishop, I'm just not going to make it. And God said, I'm going to show you that you can make it. I'm going to show you that you can make it without the job. I'm going to show you that you can make it without the house. You can make it without the car. And you can make it without that mate. I'm going to show you that all you ever needed was me. And the only way that I can do that is I have to break you. I have to break you. I have to depart you. And for some things, we have to be broken from it. Because we didn't know how to let it go. Let it go. Mm. And when you get to that place where you were so broken, then you begin to understand when he says, I look to the hills. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help because we didn't know where else to go. Mama said, if you go over there with that boy and you get with that boy, don't come back over here. Then you break up with that boy and now you don't have nowhere to go. Y'all looking at me strange. That's all right. I'm going to say what God said. Yes. When now you don't have nowhere to go. Now you don't have nowhere to be. And now you're trying to figure out where am I going to go? Where am I going to be? God said, I had to break you. I had to break you in order for you to be made whole. But he said, there's a reason why I did it. It's because there's a purpose planted on the inside of you. I want you to know that there are things like diamonds that can only be made through the crushing and the pressure of the earth. There are things on the inside of you that can only be birthed when you go through the fire. Think about gold and how gold has to be tried in the midst of the fire fire in order for the impurities to rise to the top. And so whatever God has purpose on the inside of you, that is the thing that is going to stand. That is the thing that is going to remain. And God said, who's going to disannul this purpose? That's why I allowed you to go through those situations. That's why I allowed you to go through those circumstances because I predestined you and filled you with a purpose. And purpose won't let you die. You may be broken, but purpose won't let you die. You may feel like you can't go on, but purpose won't let you die. It is written in the word of God according to Romans 8, 29 through 31, where the word of God says, for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to conform to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also he called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and him he justified, them he also glorified. And what shall we say to these things? That if God be for us, who can be against us? There's another thing that you need to understand that even when you are being broken, God is saying in Numbers 23 and 19 that God is not a man, that he should lie. Anything that God has spoken is coming to pass. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken it, shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. I was broken. But I couldn't die. Purpose Purpose. wouldn't let me die. There were things that God said about us in creation. And no matter how hard we try to stay in the background, God says you are the head and not the tail. There were things that God had spoken. And no matter how hard we try to hold our head down low, God said thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. No matter how hard these decisions that we make, And we make all these mistakes with our finances and how hard we try to be a borrower. The word of God keeps rising up in us, letting us know that we shall lend unto many nations and we shall not be the borrower. We shall be the lender and not the borrower. And no matter how I try to be ordinary, I try to fit in with everybody else. God reminds me that I am a peculiar people. I am unique. I am one of a kind. I am a holy generation. Hallelujah. And we cannot fit in with the world because we were not created to 
be like them. We don't exist to be like them. We will not purpose to be like them. But we were called out to be picked on. Called out to go through trials. Called out to go through tribulation. And purpose will not let us die. And every time we throw up our hands and we want to give up and throw our hands in in defeat, God said, nay, through all these things, that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor principalities, nor things to come, nor death, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Hallelujah. And every time the load gets to be too heavy for me, and I begin to tell God I'm not strong enough, God said, my grace is sufficient for thee and my strength is made perfect in weakness not only that when I get a little weary God said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest and when I get to be too comfortable being a follower and God told me I'm supposed to be a leader he reminds me that I'm a chosen generation I'm a royal priesthood Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We are kings and queens, and we were created to lead. God said, you are the salt of the earth. And if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? You were broken, not to remain broken, but you were broken to become whole. Because purpose wouldn't let you die. And this I am being confident in God, that he who hath begun a good work, Somebody said, he began a good work in me. He began a good work in me. He's going to perform it until the end. Being confident in this thing, I know that he's going to do it. And so here I am. Here I am after divorce. Here I am after abuse. Here I am after being talked about. Here I am after being lied on. Here I am when you said I was a mistake. Here I am when you said that I shouldn't survive. Here I am when you thought that sickness is going to take me out. Here I am. Purpose would not let me die. Some of us are wondering why it is that we are here in this building on today. Why it is that we made it to this service. It's because purpose wouldn't let you die. It wouldn't let you die in the streets. It wouldn't let you die in your sin. And I thank God for purpose. And I thank God that he kept me thus far. Hallelujah. And when others may have counted you out, God said, no. Purpose won't let you die. You were broken. But purpose wouldn't let you die. And you need to understand that all things that are happening in your life are working together for the good. It may be ugly sometimes, but it's working for the good. It may be painful sometimes, but it's working for the good. We may not understand it even in the loss of our loved ones. We don't understand it all, but it is working for our good. Because the scripture says, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And to them who are the called according to what? His purpose. It's working. To pull purpose out of you. It may not feel good, but it's working. It's working. It's working. It's working for my good. And that purpose which God has placed on the inside of me wouldn't let me die. And so when I get to a place where I'm broken, I say to God, like David said, wash me thoroughly for my iniquity. I say, have mercy upon me, O oh God, according to thy loving kindness. I say, I acknowledge my sin and my transgression. It is ever before thee, against thee, and thee alone have I sinned. But purge me with this up, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Clean me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. I understand that what I'm going through is serving purpose in your kingdom. And I know that my tears have not cried in vain. I understand that everything is working for my good. It may not look good, but it's working for my good to put purpose out 
of me to soar and to do that which God has created me to do. I was purposely broken, intentionally broken, and purpose is now thrusting me forward into what God has designed and prepared for me. I don't know who I'm talking to. But you are here today because purpose it won't let you die. So, what does that mean? That means I've got to figure out what my purpose is and be about my father's business. Because I'm here for a reason and it's more than just having babies. It's more than just getting married. It's more than, it's more than that. Because God spoke it into me in creation. And now I got to figure out and unlock that thing that he has placed on the inside of me because he left me here for a purpose. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you find yourself in the word of God on today, suffering through that identity crisis, we're going to ask you to come forward that we may help you on today to find your identity in Christ. Not only that, but if you find yourself being broken today, in a broken place, not knowing where to go or what to do and how to do it. God is saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's a reason why you are in the place and in this time and in this moment. Purpose will not let you die. Hallelujah. If there's anyone that desires prayer, we ask that you would come forward at this time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somehow, some have become 
someone. There, there's someone that had an issue, had an argument with a family member last night. There was some confusion with a family member last night, and you went to bed with that and a disagreement. If you're here, come on up and let us pray. Because we see the devil want to get in between families. The devil want to tear up families and and, and you ought to know that you are a winner. And if you're a winner, your family is a winner. Scripture says, don't let that go down. Don't, don't let the wrath go down. The sun should not go down on your wrath. So whoever you might be, we're going to pray for you. And we're going to pray for your family. Because nothing is more important than your family.
you have no dominion here. Hallelujah. Satan, you have no authority here. Oh God, we pray for wisdom, we pray for prosperity. Oh God, we pray for strength, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we cast out in the name of Jesus. We free his mind, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Free his spirit. In the name of Jesus. 